क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी वन से क्रिटिकल एंगल फॉर टोटल इंटरनल रिफ्लेक्शन फॉर अ सब्सटेंस इज सिक्सटी डिग्रीज देन द पोलराइजिंग एंगल फॉर दिस सब्सटेंस विल बी नॉट ए स्टूडेंट्स एज पर द क्वेश्चन द क्रिटिकल एंगल इज सिक्सटी डिग्रीज नाउ इफ द क्रिटिकल एंगल इज सी वी कैन राइट दैट साइन सी वुड बी इक्वल टू वन बाय म्यू विच मीन्स जो स्टूडेंट दैट म्यू इज इक्वल टू वन बाय साइन सी एज पर द क्वेश्चन सी इज सिक्सटी डिग्रीज देखो वी कैन राइट म्यू इज इक्वल टू वन बाय साइन सिक्सटी देखो डे स्टूडेंट म्यू और द रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स ऑफ दिस सब्सटांस कम्स आउट टू बी इक्वल टू टू बाय रूट थ्री इन ऑर्डर स्टूडेंट द पोलराइजिंग एंगल और द ब्रूस्टर एंगल कैन बी रिटर्न टू बी इक्वल टू टेन इनवर्स म्यू दिस इज द पोलराइजिंग एंगल देखो पोलराइजिंग एंगल इज इक्वल टू टेन इनवर्स टू बाय रूट थ्री एंड हेंस The correct answer for this particular question should be option number three. Now, dear students, let us proceed to the next question, which is question number thirty-two. Question number thirty-two says that the power factor of an AC circuit having resistance R and capacitance C connected in series with a source of angular frequency omega is. Now, dear students, the power factor or cos theta is defined as R by Z. Where Z is the impedance of the circuit, Z can be written to be equal to under root of R square plus XC square, where XC is the reactance of the capacitor. Now XC is equal to one by omega C. Therefore Z is equal to R square plus one by omega square C square. On substituting this value. In this expression of cos theta, we can write cos theta to be equal to R divided by under root of R square plus one by omega square C square, which will be equal to R omega C divided by under root of R square omega square C square plus one. Therefore, dear students, the correct answer for this particular question should be option number two. Now let us proceed to the further question, which is question number thirty-three. Question number thirty-three says that a resistance of forty ohms, a coil of inductive reactance twenty ohms, and a capacitor of capacitive reactance fifty ohms are connected across two fifty volt mains series. The potential difference across the capacitor will be. Now, dear students, to solve this question, we must first find out the current that is flowing through the circuit. And to find out the current, let us proceed. And find out the impedance of the circuit. The impedance of the circuit can be written to be equal to R square plus X L minus X C whole square, where X L and X C are reactances of inductance and capacitor respectively. On substituting the values, we can write Z is equal to under root of 40 square plus 50 minus 20 square, which will be equal to 1600 plus 900, which will be equal to 50. Now, therefore, this one the current that flows through the circuit would be V by Z, that is 250 divided by 50, which will be equal to 5 amperes. And the potential difference across the capacitor would be I into reactance of the capacitor, that will be 5 into 50, which will be 250. Volts, and hence the correct answer for this particular question should be option number one. Now, dear students, let us proceed to question number thirty-four. Question number thirty-four says a current as a function of time is given as I is equal to three t square for t is greater than zero and less than t. The RMS value of current in the time interval t is equal to zero to t is equal to capital T is. Now, dear students, the RMS value Of a current is equal to integral of i square dt divided by integral of dt and a whole under root of this expression. We have to find out the RMS value from zero to capital T, from zero till capital T. Now, dear students, on writing the expression as per the given question, we can write i RMS to be equal to under root integral of nine t to the power four dt. Zero to t divided by t. Now, 
the integration of 9 t to the power 4 would be 9 t to the power 5 by 5 divided by t under root. We have to put the limit from 0 till t. This will be equal to under root of 9 t to the power 5 by 5t or 9 t to the power 4 by 5 under root. On solving it further, we can write that IRM is to be equal to 3 t to the power 2 by root 5. Therefore, dear students, the correct answer for this particular question should be option number 3. Now, let us proceed to the further question in the test, which is question number 35. Question number 35 says that an alternating EMF 100 cos 200 T volt is connected in series to a resistance of 20 ohms and inductance 100 milli henry. The phase difference between current and EMF in the circuit will be. Now dear students, we can solve this question using the concept of phasors. Now since both the elements are in series, they will have a common phasor of current. Let this be the phasor of current. Now in the inductor, the voltage leads the current. So we can write the voltage of inductor as per this phasor. This will be equal to I into XL. Whereas for the resistor, the voltage and the current are in phase. So VR will be equal to I into R. Therefore, dear students, the net voltage will be somewhere in this direction. And if this is the angle phi, this phi would be the phase difference between the current and the voltage. We can write tan phi to be equal to VL by VR or XL by R. XL can be written to be equal to omega L divided by R. Now, dear students, as per the question, omega is given to be equal to 200. L is given to be equal to 100 milli henry. R is given to be equal to 20 ohms. On solving this question, we can write that tan phi is equal to 1, which means phi is pi by 4 radians or 45 degrees. Therefore, the correct answer for this particular question should be option number 4. Now, dear students, let us proceed to question number 36. 